Hi, I'm David. Welcome to Woodstuff Workshop. Today we're going to look at the Parkside Electric Planer. So this was from Lidl and it was, I think it was £24 something, around £25. So let's open her up, see what we we'll get. So obviously instructions, these parts in a bag and the plane. Right, so the model number of this is B P sorry P E H 30 C3. It's uh, 750 watts. The plane in width on there is 82 millimeters. And it has a cutting depth of 0 to 3 millimeters. So you set the depth on this. Like turn the, it's got a dial on there. Turn it all the way to the uh, right, and it's at 3 millimeters there. And all the way back is at zero. So on here, there's supposed to be a 3 meter cable, which is a nice long cable. The uh, this comes with, it's a three year warranty, so obviously just take it back if it uh, packs in. And what's a really good feature on this one is this stand. It's got a stand just there, so when you're pushing it along, the stand goes flat, so it doesn't get in the way, but when you lift it up, the stand drops down like that. So it means that your blades, you could stand this up once you've planed something, you can just stand this on your bench and uh, your planer blades won't hit while they're slowing down. It'll keep them off the, uh, off the work surface or off the bench surface, which is good. Quite like that feature. So uh, as well on here, there's this. This is the chip uh, ejector, this. And it's got, you can turn it because it locks in and then you can undo it. It's a bit like that and take that out. If you want it to eject the chips on this left hand side, you can just put it through in there and then just turn it and lock it in, push it right in and turn it and lock it in and they'll eject out to the left there. I'll put it in this other side, obviously, to uh, eject out the right. So that's supposed to shoot the chips out there. You've got an adapter there if you want to join it onto a shop vac or hoover, whatever, to collect your chippings. Right, uh, it's got a nice, comfortable grip on there. The uh, So on the bottom there, on the plate, you've got these grooves and that's for if you want to put a chamfer on the edge of a piece of wood so you would uh, take your plane in you pick whichever size you want of chamfer and just run it along the edge like that the blades that are on there they're double-sided which is quite good so you can take after a time of wearing them out or if you accidentally hit a nail or something you could uh, take the undo them and turn them around and put them in because they've got another cutting edge obviously uh, you want to uh, follow the instructions in the manual and you get a little tool uh, you get a spanner and a little hexagon allen key for taking them out on the side there let's put that out of the way on the side here, that's just a bit of a guard because obviously when this is going, that's spinning round and that's just a guard to cover the side up a bit and it just uh, goes up a bit when you put it down on your work surface. You get uh, this plate, they call it a rip fence. Don't know why rip fence. Uh, it's a bit bent, you have to bend it at 
like bend it in shape to get it nice and uh, straight and flat but you get this uh, elbow piece and you put the bolt through there and just put the washer on and uh, that knob under there to do it up and that fits on this left hand side so you just undo that and then stick it on there. And just do that up nice and tight. So that's tight there. And uh, now you'd use this knob to slide where you want this. And what this is for so if you wanted, you can use this for, if you wanted to do a rebate on a edge of a piece of wood. So you want to put that on, and on this other side, there's, uh, you get this stop that fits on this knob here. So, I hope I've got that in camera. That's a lot to put it there. So undo this uh, right hand side knob, put this foot on. It's a depth stop. So let's screw that up. So using both them, that stop and that one, now you could use this to do a rebate. So uh, on a piece of wood. So you're not playing in all the surface, you're just playing in a rebate on the side. So if you're doing a big thick piece of wood, you can take this look right up I think it goes 24 mil in total or something the depth on there which is quite handy but uh, yeah that's what you use them for if you're not using the full planing service so if you were planing the top of if you had a door a uh, door edge you wanted to plane the edge of a door we don't need that depth stop you won't need that Say if your door was up on edge, set it to the width of, uh, just over the width of your uh, door. Was, if you were doing the edge of a door now, you'd be playing along there. But at least that's guarding the blade. Of the, you know, the blade that's sticking out, the rest of the blade. If you didn't have this on, then obviously it's all unguarded. So if that one there, and you've just got this uh, as it is, and you're playing in the edge of the door, you'll have all that lot sticking over the edge, which is a bit dodgy. So that's uh, what you can use that for, just to sort of cover the bit of blade that you're not using. That's just a lock. You've got to uh, push that in. It comes out the left hand side and right. So. It may, you know, you can, it's whichever one side you prefer to use. You push it in and then you're able to push the trigger. So uh, that's what that's for. You can't push the trigger without depressing that as well. But it doesn't, like some tools where you can press the button, press the trigger and then uh, let go of the trigger. Sometimes some tools will stay on you know sort of hold it on but you can't on this obviously because it's pretty dangerous so uh, just switches off automatically as soon as you let go of it right so what I bought this for was uh, I use a load of pallet wood and what I want to do is just use it for just giving sometimes giving the uh, pallet wood a skim over Obviously when I'm doing a just a surface like that I can I don't need any of the uh, guards or any uh, any of the like fences or anything on there because I'm using the whole of the cutting uh, the width of the cutting blade so we'll get this plugged in and see how we uh, how it works see how good it is we were careful when a uh, we took them to bits to make sure we got the nails out but I've just been over it with my detector just to uh, check there's no metal in there because else it'll obviously take nicks out the blade so let's see how she does <laughs> Oh. 
Alright, let's try a bit more. Let's turn it up to be taking one millimetre off. Well, that ejector, I don't know what's going on, but uh, that's just throwing it out sideways and everywhere. At least it's not in my face, but uh, that's playing in that. Oh, let's turn that round and try and get these marks out. So I'm at one millimeter depth here. It's okay, it's doing that, but the problem is that when if I'm if you're doing something like I'm doing here, it's hard to control it to uh, get no lines from where you've been on one side and then you go on another. It's hard to not get a line sort of in the middle. But the other uh, plane inner of edges and everything should be okay. So yeah, it's okay. It's noisy. Try and keep it nice and flat and level and just keep it going straight and then it'll be okay. And when you're getting near the end, get ready for it to drop into the wood because uh, it will, it'll drop. If there's nothing hold support in this end, uh, if there's nothing support in the end, it'll drop and just take junk out of your wood. So get ready and hold it and just... Uh, support it here and take it off the end like that as long as you leave your wood plenty long enough to chop the ends off the ejection thing uh, this seemed to uh, chuck it everywhere it i don't know if it got blocked at all let's have a look let's just take that out no it's not blocked but I think it's probably because I had the bottom over. Uh, if that was completely flat on the top of the uh, workpiece like that, then it would throw it out where it's supposed to. So uh, it's okay, it'll do the job, but it's cheap and cheerful. So uh, you can't expect a lot for the money. But so there is just the few bits and bobs like this this guard here that's got a lot of movement lock sideways but it don't go it didn't enough for it to hit the blade which is okay but uh, yeah it's just a bit slack in there that's just to guard the edge of the blades on the sides there but uh, yeah, it's okay. It's not bad. It will do the job. But look, it's very messy, obviously. Look at the mess going everywhere. So uh, you could do with the extraction on it. So that was just a quick look then at the uh, Parkside PH30C3. So if it was of any use or you liked the video, if you could give it a thumbs up, that'd be great. And if you can click the logo in the corner, and I never know which corner it is, if you could click that to subscribe, that'd be brilliant. And uh, you'll be able to follow, see what I'm up to in the workshop. So stay safe, take care. See you next time.